If one puppy is good, two must be better, right? Well, maybe you thought that it would be hard for the whole family to share just one furry potato, and you wanted more fur to go around. Or maybe you thought that by having two puppies, they could keep each other company and be built-in playmates? Well, I'm here to tell you, maybe with time and training. Now, I don't want to rain on your parade, but I do want to share with you some of the realities you'll face when you bring two puppies home at the same time, or who are close in age. With 20 years of experience as a certified trainer, I've seen my fair share of litter mates. Stick with me, I've got some great advice for you. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Before I dive right into today's training tips, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss when another valuable puppy training video comes out. In the Puppy Training with Michelle Lennon group, we often have people considering the idea of two pups, or some who already have two pups. Now, a recent poster shared that she had an 11-week-old puppy and her husband brought her home a 7-week-old puppy for her birthday. That was quite the surprise for her. I hated to tell her this, but that birthday gift is going to take up a lot of her time. Whenever we have two puppies, approximately the same age, we want to be observant of the bond, healthy or unhealthy, that can actually develop between them. We want to avoid the hyper-bonding that is harmful to their relationship with each other and you. Now, this doesn't just happen with two puppies from the same litter. It could happen with two puppies who are from two totally different places and different breeds, but are similar in age. Now, there's no magic number, but in general, puppies who are within three to four months of each other in age are more susceptible to a hyper-bonded relationship. And puppies who are raised together can develop an unhealthy dependence on each other, making any separation from each other extremely difficult for canine and human. This is called neophobia, the extreme dislike of anything new or unfamiliar. Now, this can easily happen when we have two puppies, and do not take additional steps to expose them to other dogs and situations, and accidentally assuming their needs are met with each other. We want to raise two puppies to enjoy each other, and yes, have a bond, but not so much that they can't exist apart from each other. Exposure is a hot topic in the dog training world right now, and I'm super passionate about it too. It's so important to understand what we can do when our dogs are young to help them feel comfortable, confident, with the world around them. I made a whole video about it that I want you to watch after this one. And when watching it, remember that you'll have two times the exposure. Don't say I didn't warn you. Remember that if you have two puppies, they are more likely to have poor socialization as they often pay more attention to each other. Now, without humans who work hard to combat this, they might fail to learn necessary skills to actually interact with other dogs or people. Now here are my best tips for raising two puppies together. Stay with me till the end for my advice on a good age to add a new dog if you don't have litter mates. We never want to put two dogs in the same crate. It's important for each dog to have their own space. Now as they grow and mature, they will potentially fight for space and being in a closed small quarters would not be safe. Now you've probably heard of resource guarding, which you might assume is about toys or treats and dogs being protective of them, but actually space is also a resource. Hormonal changes during adolescence can also contribute to squabbles, especially if they're sharing resources. Now I have a quick story to share about a situation where one of my clients called me in hysterics after she returned home from being out, only to find her pug had lost an eye. How in the world did this happen, you ask? Well, she had always left her two dogs in the same crate when she left the house. They had always gotten along, and they never had any issues. But, unfortunately, something unexpected can happen in an instant. The one dog had gotten frustrated being in the same space as the other dog, and a fight broke out over space. The pug lost an eye that could not be repaired. Now, I share this story with you in the hopes that you heed my warning to never put two dogs in the same crate. Now, more about resource guarding can be found here. Their crates should not be close enough for the dogs to actually touch each other. They should not really be able to see each other. I also don't love those crates with two compartments in them, one for each dog, as the dogs can actually get upset being so close to each other. Barrier frustration can occur when a dog gets frustrated at a gate, a divider, or even a fence when they can't get to the dog on the opposite side. 
Ideally, your pups should be in their own crate with a cover over the top, sides, and the front, leaving the back open for airflow. Now, the crate cover is really helpful for all dogs, but especially in a situation like this. Trial and error will really be a big part of your life with these two pups. Some pups do better if their crates are pretty close to each other. It helps them settle to know each one is close by. But some puppies need to have their own crates pretty far apart or even in separate rooms. The presence of the other puppy could actually be distracting and actually inhibit relaxation and rest. So you really have to be a puppy detective and look for clues that could indicate what's going on to work best for your individual dogs. When these dogs are little, we want them to have time apart so an unhealthy bond doesn't form. Of course we want them to interact and play together, but we wanna make sure it's the appropriate amount of time for their age and development. Puppies who play too long and become overtired can have some unwanted behaviors like biting and jumping, pulling on the leash, and having a difficult time settling down. Now we want each of them to have their own one-to-one -one time with the humans in the house so they can develop the human-canine bond in addition to the strong bond that will naturally develop with the other puppy. We wanna make sure that you, the human, maintains your relationship with each of them. We don't want you to become the third wheel in the relationship, but rather we want you to be the focus so they pay attention to you and follow requests when you ask. Now this comes with time and training. Speaking of training, you'll want them to each have separate training time with you. Now these puppies will be a huge distraction to each other, so initially, Training will need to be done apart so that they can learn the concepts in a less distracting environment. This is actually a training concept we teach for all dogs, not just two in one home. Keep distractions low when they're learning new skills. Then, as part of the practice, slowly turn up the training dial with more and more distractions. And at first, it might just be noise, like a radio or TV. Then you might involve another human who is in the room during training. Then maybe the human moves and maybe makes some noise. Do you see how slowly I'm increasing those distractions? If we had a training dial with numbers from one to 10, adding in the distraction of another puppy would be like a 10. That's the ultimate distraction. And those same two puppies outside, that would be totally off the charts. Leash skills can be difficult to teach. And with two, you've really got to eat your Wheaties on this one. Now I've got you covered with the best leash training games inside my course. Now, as you can see, the training process with two puppies will be more than double the time as it would be with one, since we have to work with each one individually and then restart that same training with them together. This is why you're gonna to wanna to get the training concepts very solid with each dog before introducing the other dog into the scene. Now, when you do begin the training with them together, you're gonna to want a handler for each one. So, if you haven't brought home those two puppies yet, you'll want to evaluate if this is a similar situation for you and how you're going to work through it in your household. Let's talk about puppy play. Of course, we want those puppies to play together. They will naturally play the minute they get in the same space, but play is not really healthy for them if it's just a free for all for hours on end. These pups could ramp themselves up to the point of exhaustion and they won't quit. Now, when allowing dogs to play together, you'll want to build in what we call pauses in play. This means giving the dogs breaks or downtime after just a few minutes of playing. And after a play session, which could be about five to 10 minutes at first, you'll definitely want to get them out for potty breaks. And then it might be time for some separate naps to settle down from all that excitement. It's also great to bring another dog into the mix so those two pups learn how to play with different dogs. You'll wanna choose the other dog very carefully, making sure that the size and temperament are good matches. Introductions to the new dog done appropriately are very important. Be sure you've brushed up on your canine communication skills. This means understanding what their body language means and when it's time for you to intervene. Many of our students say that our canine body language lessons are one of the best parts of our online course. Understanding the body language during doggy play, it's super helpful. Now, when there are resources available like food during mealtimes, chewing tools like bully sticks or even Nyla bones or Kongs, you're gonna wanna make sure those dogs are separate to avoid the resource guarding that could crop up. Some dogs can't even be in each other's sight when they have these items. Puppy pens for each puppy in a different room will be very important. Just because these dogs are from the same litter or are the same breed does not mean they're gonna have the same preferences. 
Dogs naturally like to dig, sniff, explore, chew, forage, chase, fetch, shred, and so much more. But some dogs prefer some of those activities more than others. It's our job as the puppy parents to give them a chance to explore their preferences. And if your two dogs have different preferences, that's what you have to do. I know you might be thinking, I'm being this negative Nelly here with all this advice, but it's actually my job to make you aware of all the possibilities. Plenty of people bring home littermates and have a fine experience. I always say to put in the effort on the front end to reap the rewards on the back end. So save yourself and your dogs the emotional heartache of a pup who is bonded in an unhealthy manner to another dog. Start off on the right paw when you bring them home. Now before I share my last tip with you, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss another important lesson like this one again. Alright, if you haven't brought home littermates yet, maybe you're thinking, okay Michelle, okay I get it, maybe two pups at the same time is not what I want, but at what age would be a good time to add another dog to the home? This is a great question. There's no magic number, but I usually suggest waiting until your new puppy is at least a year old before bringing in another young thing. They'll still be close enough in age to have similar interest in play and similar energy, but not so close that it's an unhealthy bond that might develop. And of course, above all, wait until your training is sufficient that you like the behavior of your older dog before you introduce a new one in. Now the new dog will pick up habits from the older one, so make sure those behaviors are the ones you like. For the best guidance as you begin your life with two additional members of your family, I definitely recommend our online training course, 30 Days to Puppy Perfection, specifically the pro level, so you can have that ongoing guidance and support of the certified trainers. Quite a few students who have more than one puppy have definitely benefited greatly from our online course. Alright, in the comments below, tell me which tip was most helpful. 